today I will provide you with an introduction to Maslin 2 or some form of that pronunciation and specifically I will follow the instructions provided by the developer which I will link below but this video is for those who are more virtual learners. So Maslin 2 is an R and bioconductor package for associating microbial data with complex clinical metadata. What this also is, is a multivariable framework that models a univariate outcome or a dependent variable, such as bacterial taxa, against multivariate metadata, so your predictors or independent variables. And within this framework, you can also model hierarchical random effects in addition to fixed effects. So this is a brief introduction um, before we go ahead and get started in RStudio. So I already have loaded the code here, but we will go through it together. Um, first, you'd want to go ahead and install the package. Um, you would hit run. I already have this installed, so I don't need to do this today. You will get two prompts and the first you would want to answer yes and then hit run. And the second answer with an A and then hit run again. And then here you would want to set your um, working directory. We would be creating a specific folder where we can have our output data saved to. It just makes it easier to have everything in one folder and then update your working directory to that folder afterwards. Of course, we would want to go ahead and load the package into the R environment. And as with any package, if you insert a question mark in advance of the package um, beside it, then you would be able to get more specifics about the package and you can go through that under the help window in R. All right, so for this tutorial, we will be using two data sets, a data file with bacterial taxonomy and the metadata with clinical data. And these are both provided within the package and can be retrieved as follows. You can also find these data sets uh, if, if you look into the human microbiome project online. Okay, next we want to assign data frames to both these data sets and we'll call these df underscore input underscore data and df underscore input underscore metadata. One data frame for each data set. And you can see that these show up here under my data view. Now within Maslin 2, there are many parameter options for different data processing from normalization to transformation and to the analysis method itself. So by default, this package employs a TSS normalization from counts to relative abundances and a log transformation. And its analysis method is an LM or a linear model. If you follow the tutorial that's provided online, um, the associations of interest were done using your, your data or taxonomy file against two clinical variables, the diagnosis variable and the dysbiosis variable, which as you can see here, if we actually go ahead and open our data sets or our data frames, So you can see that these two variables represent both a continuous variable and a categorical variable, looking at Crohn's disease versus ulcerative colitis. Now for the categorical variable, you do have to specify um, what your reference will be. And when you do that, make sure that there are no spaces in between the variable and the level, or it might result in the wrong reference level being used. So you saw that we had CD 
uh, UC and there was also a third level non-IBD which we've included as a reference here. So let's go ahead and run this. And it will take some time to generate all of our output data. So let's let it run its course. Your laptop fan will also love this. Okay, so it looks like it's done. Before we go ahead and review the output files, I want to show you a few things that you can do beyond the tutorial. So first, as, as you've, you've seen, you can include multiple covariates and you would include those under fixed effects. So I can include age, for example. Um, age was a variable in our metadata. So that's what I have included here. You can also specify the analysis method. Um, if you recall, by default, this package uses LM. Um, we could do CPLM, for example, for compound Poisson linear models. Um, now, with these statistical models, uh, just make sure for your if your input is count data, then you can use a negative binomial distribution or a zero inflated negative binomial distribution. Whereas for non-count inputs, you can use the LM or the CPLM. So how this would look like. You can specify this as so. make sure you include your comma or you will get an error. So when you select your statistical model, you also have to be very careful about the type of pre-processing that you want to do um, and that your normalization and transformation options are valid in that respect. For example, if your input is count data, you can use a TMM or a CSS normalization or none if the data are already normalized and in these cases you would not transform the data. If you're using non-count data like CPLM uh, then you can normalize using TSS um, or CLR. For the purposes of today let's just um, do none for both normalization and transformation. And then one thing to note here is that you can also include random effects. So that would look something like random effects. And then you would list your variables here. For example, if you had a categorical variable um, with five levels, you don't have to specify random effects. You also don't have to specify um, fixed effects, you can leave this out, in which case it will run every column in your metadata as a fixed effect. Okay, so I won't run this just to save time, but let's look at the output data from what we ran prior, and this is what's in the developer tutorial as well, so you'll be able to, um, to, to compare and contrast with that. Okay, so let's briefly take a look at the output files. These are saved in the folder that we created for our new directory. 
and it separates it out by all results or by just the significant results. These are both in TSV format. Um, you can open these in Excel. So you'll see here we have a list of all associations that pass the significance threshold. And we didn't talk about this earlier, but the default adjustment in this package is a benjamini Hoshberg false discovery rate that um, you can see in this column. Uh, you also get the mi microbial feature here against the variable name um, it's associated with. And for categorical variables, uh, you for categorical features, you would also get the specific level or the value. For example, you see, as you see, um, you also get the coefficients. And these reflect the category specified under value versus the reference category that you had specified uh, in the in the model. You can see the direction of the coefficients and then the, the significance. Finally, it also provides you with uh, plots and a heat map. So you can see a sneak peek here. You have plots for your significant values. And then it gives you a little heat map here. Um, you must have two or more fixed effects variables for it to generate a heat map. So just keep that in mind. Um, so in, in a sense, this is uh, you know kind of the the data set that you would start with in terms of reviewing your associations, and then. It also provides you with visuals to be able to complement these with one another. So I hope that this gave you a good overview of this package and that it will be useful for your work. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below and I will see you next time.